Just a few months ago, it was hard to ignore the hype that Riot's entry into the FPS genre was generating. Because this game does look that good, and people think it has the potential to be that next big thing. Feels like they took everything that people have been complaining about Counter-Strike, and fixed it. This game will be incredibly popular, there's absolutely no doubts about it. Fast forward to today. The game has launched and has more or less quietly settled down. While it isn't reasonable to expect interest to remain at the same level from announcement to release, with the level of insurmountable expectations that the game had, it's hard not to feel a little disappointed by the position the game holds today. Is this just another step in the hype cycle? Was Riot Games in over their heads? Does the gaming public not know what it wants? Did anything go wrong at all? What happened to the Valorant hype? Do you think Valorant will overtake CS? Uh, probably. I just think because it's a much easier game to get into, much more pleasing to the eye, like a little bit more casual. Valorant's core gameplay was set up to be an incredibly safe bet. Based off of the 20 plus years of balancing and development that Counter-Strike created, but mixed in character identity through the use of agents instead of nameless soldiers. The streamlining of systems and clear visual language made the game very easy to parse and very easy to run on lower end machines. No real risks were taken. And many CSGO and Overwatch vets would not stop gushing about it, praising the high-paced, aim-centric gunplay. Uh, actually, after playing it a little bit, I, I actually really like the game. Overall, for me, I think it's a really good game. For the launch of the closed beta, keys were granted to viewers of Valorant streams on Twitch very sparsely and randomly. The exclusivity hype and testimonials all generated a level of fear of missing out in the gaming public that would have them leaving streams open just for the minuscule chance of a key drop to get in and start playing. While Riot has employed similar tactics in the past, and this particular method worked to great effect for their digital card game Legends of Runeterra, this time around the sheer popularity of the FPS genre exploded Valorant's category on Twitch. Depending on your view of it, you could say the view numbers were inflated at almost breaking the 1.74 million concurrent record with only 1.73. Some partnered streamers would even leave their streams on a 24-7 mode with a VOD playing passively to promote a steady stream of viewership for people hoping for a chance at the drop. There's no editing. You fucking throw up your VOD as soon as you go offline. Like I'm playing my fucking outro video. That's how easy it is. Couple double clicks, hit the play, and you leave. Some prominent streamers not even set up to be distributing keys on their channel would title their streams similarly, just to get the added viewership. I feel a bit harsh, but come on, bro. Don't fucking clickbait, man. It's so annoying. I mean, if we have drops, cool. But if you didn't want to take part in the alpha test, then you don't get drops. This exclusivity marketing tactic was a success. Nearly every corner of the internet was talking about Riot's incredibly anticipated title. The allure of a fresh competitive scene and the mixing of popular proven game elements had enough intrigue for a wide range of players to give Valorant a go. While this specific marketing tactic was viewed with some negativity for abusing the platform and players' FOMO, it did its job and cemented Twitch as a very effective and fairly cheap marketing platform. They smoked here. They're coming here. There's too much fucking shit in this game. There's too much fucking shit. There's too much shit. While the beta itself was considerably popular, as soon as players got their hands on the game, certain issues began to make themselves visible. The aggressive anti-cheat began to make itself apparent. And even after many updates slowly dialing it down, it would become notorious for its incidents where it shut down fan controllers and drivers on players' computers without any notification. Players would also begin to cite issues with the map design. Valorant's heavy reliance on abilities caused the maps to be designed with many corners and hiding spots, fatiguing the attacking side by forcing them to spend a lot of time checking every angle with either their aim or abilities. Brings up an extremely important aspect of level design, which is simplicity. Without even playing on the map, just look at how insanely cluttered this is compared to these. These jagged edges scattered throughout the map make the game way less accessible. Despite the criticisms, many of which could be chalked up to the fact that these are the very first iterations of the game, Valorant had what could be considered a fairly successful beta. The game wasn't broken by any traditional definitions of the word, and even though the hype wasn't at its ridiculous pre-beta levels, the game was mostly found to be a good time by players. After the beta came to launch, much sooner than expected. The quick release could have been Riot wanting to cash in on the current stay-at-home market, or it could have been a product of a slowly declining player base influenced by how several content creators have been burnt out and no longer streaming the game. Either way, the release signaled that Riot felt the game was in a complete state, and soon after, it launched on June 2nd.
As expected from Riot Games, Valorant launched with a high-quality cinematic and a sizable content drop. A new map, Ascent, and a new agent, Reyna. Ascent was praised for not having similar geometry issues like its predecessors. And similarly, Reyna was fairly well received with her unique abilities making her a potent duelist. Riot Games has continued to roll out balance patches and quality of life updates, but the hype for the game and the associated online viewership has never quite returned to previous levels. Valorant currently sits at an 80 on Metacritic, with its user score fluctuating based on player frustrations with the game's launch. In the days following release, players reported server instabilities, match histories not showing up, and issues with purchasing the battle pass in addition to funds that they had purchased in the beta not transferring over properly. They put RP seven, 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 seven. and LP, right? But every once in a while, when you front into the game, they give you a, a small dosage of, it, of, of, of RP, right? They give, you, when you, they give you like 5 or 10, when you need like 50 to unlock something, right? And you're like, oh my god, oh my god. And, and they sting you, oh, oh my god. And then you feel the, the, the effects, and you're like, oh my god, I want more. But oh wait, you have to, you have to buy those, right? Oh, a little okay. dosage, in it, and now you're addicted. Since launch, the biggest factor of player frustration has been skin prices. With almost limitless potential for customization options, Riot Games has given the community only a small set of options for what could be unlocked with inflated price tags that many have considered to be a little ridiculous. Not only that, but the paid battle pass rewards a currency, Radiantite, that can only upgrade a skin that has been bought, leaving full free-to-play players with no use for them as any free-to-play gun skins are unupgradable. Beyond this, the lack of fundamental elements like a competitive mode and replays just beg the question of why release the game in this state in the first place. This is one of those questions that we might never really get an answer to. But what we can see is how the uncertainty of the game's readiness at launch has had an impact on the community. It's curious why no Valorant? Because the rank system is shit. And I reached the highest rank, so why even play? Yeah, that wasn't me. There's no solo or dual queue, and the highest rank is Valorant, and that's it. Like, what do you do after reaching Valorant? Nothing. Twitch viewership stats, while not being a definitive benchmark about the health of a game, are a decent rough way of gauging a game's popularity in the market. And when it comes to these numbers, Valorant's viewership has been waning ever since its beta launch. With an over 50% loss in both May and June, it could just be a case of the overinflated stats finally stabilizing. But the jury is still out on where exactly these numbers are going to settle at, as the game is still new and continuously rolling out updates and improvements. If I'm being 100% honest, I think from a viewer's perspective, I was thinking about it while we were playing, from a viewer's perspective, it's very kind of slow and bland in some of these very stupid and like boring choke points, right? It's like this choke point mid, put a smoke down, put a smoke down, put a smoke down. And then it's just like one big hit, almost like Overwatch. It's kind of like, I don't know. One thing that's for certain is that we're seeing an exit of influencers who hopped onto the Valorant bandwagon now returning to their game of choice, leaving behind those who are committed to making a name for themselves in the game's community, probably for the best. Valorant is fun, man. It's a fun game, for sure. The only the problem I have with it is it's too repetitive, it's not fun to watch, and I feel like the abilities are kind of, like, not balanced. While the game did not launch with a competitive mode, it has since been added. No major differences from the beta iteration, but it did rename the confusingly named final rank from Valorant to Radiant, to avoid confusion. On the opposite side of the globe, Valorant, while gaining a great deal of interest in China, has struggled to take off in South Korea. It's hard to nail it down to a specific reason, but one possible factor is public wariness during the current global health situation and its influence on eagerness to go to PC cafes. It also doesn't help that there have been many allegations that Vanguard clashes with some of the pre-installed software on computers and PC banks, leaving the owners of these facilities having to debate whether or not to install the game itself in addition to having it run in general. What's also likely is that there just isn't enough incentive for Korean players to to play the game in these cafes, stemming from expectations from their experience with League of Legends. Unlike playing at home, League of Legends at PC cafes have every champion already unlocked, among other rewards that incentivizes playing. While as of this video, Valorant still requires users to grind out games to unlock the agents of their choosing. A bear came from the wall that was placed from the Sage, right? Because that's always going to be a very common push in the beginning of a pistol round to just go for that. Now, though, you got Drone hanging around the side. Wardell, he's going to make his presence felt, getting himself two kills with that one. And a flawless ending Jeez. there for TSM. What a start okay. for this team, losing no beats. The game is still too new to have a very established esports scene. However, from the get-go, Valorant was designed as an esport, and many of the closed beta tournaments have been pretty promising. In fact, the Ignition series has been fairly successful, a global competitive tournament circuit sponsored and promoted by Riot, but run by third-party organizations. 
This light, hands-off approach seems like a good option to try and let the scene grow organically, as that is how many of the most successful scenes come to be. Valorant's first official tournament pulled some formidable numbers and shows that the scene has some promise. Cordell dropping back to that position, not allowing them to get any kind of presence inside of this one. So Rosa, a headshot onto Food, and Wardell still lingering outside. Nails another shot on the bracket. Done. It ain't gonna matter. TSM are the first North American Ignition Series champion. At the end of the day, Valorant's gameplay works. It is competitive with an incredibly high skill ceiling and is designed for fans of this very specific FPS style. Valorant isn't a game for everyone and it doesn't have to be. What we're seeing now in terms of the moderate deflation of the community is more likely to be a result of the launch hype dying down, and the player base stabilizing as people decide whether or not this is going to be the type of game they're willing to put the hours into. Many of the actual issues, from skin prices to hit registration, are all fixable, and not really so core that they will never be solved. So it's too early to determine Valorant's fate. Being an online games-as-a-service title, the only direction to go is up. While for one reason or the other the game didn't launch with the explosion that many onlookers thought it would, it is extremely unlikely that Riot will abandon it. Which means that if you are unsatisfied with its current state, all we need to do is wait. What do you think the future holds for Valorant? And what would you like to see added or changed? Let us know in the comments below.